Tsunamis. Here you are at step 12, where you will learn how tsunamis are formed, how they move, and how you can protect yourself. Although tsunamis are often referred to as tidal waves, they are not actually formed by tidal activity, which is caused by gravitational force of the sun and the moon. Tsunamis, like the waves in the ocean, are made up of hollows and crests. But the difference between normal waves and tsunamis comes from the energy that creates them. Waves formed by the wind's energy only move on the surface of the ocean and cannot exceed a certain height or a certain speed of propagation. For tsunamis, it is very different. So, what causes a tsunami? Excellent question, Wallace. There are several important phenomena that create tsunamis. Some are extremely rare phenomena such as meteorite falls. Or nuclear tests, which can cause tsunamis with devastating effects. There are also volcanic eruptions or landslides. Wallace, did you know that a long time ago there was even a tsunami in Switzerland on Lake Geneva in the year 563? When an entire mountain bridge collapsed at the mouth of the lake, it caused a tsunami with a wave height of 13 metres in Lausanne and 8 metres in Geneva. The tsunami created significant floods around the lake. Can earthquakes cause tsunamis? Yes, Wallace. Most tsunamis are formed by underwater earthquakes, whose magnitude is above 7 on the Richter scale. Imagine the amount of energy released. Inevitably, there will be a lot of damage. A tsunami is caused when there is movement in a fault along the seabed. Look carefully. Usually, faults don't move, but if the stress from the tectonic plates increases beyond a certain threshold, the fault breaks violently, creating an earthquake. An enormous amount of energy dissipates in waveform. It spreads throughout the depth of the ocean and reaches the surface, creating a wave of only a few centimetres in height, with a very long wavelength. This wave propagates very quickly across the water, at a rate of about 600 to 800 kilometres per hour, like the speed of an aeroplane. The speed of the wave depends on the depth of the ocean. When the wave nears the land, 
the water becomes shallower and shallower, and the wave suddenly slows down, causing water to rush away from the shore. The wave is then caught up by another wave. This creates an accumulation of wave energy and an increase in wave height. The tsunami is born. The word tsunami comes from Japanese, meaning the port wave. When Japanese fishermen returned from fishing, they were all surprised to see that their harbour had been completely destroyed by a wave which they had not felt at sea. In 2004, in the Indian Ocean, an earthquake with a magnitude of 9.1 triggered one of the most severe tsunamis known to date, reaching 30 metres in height. It killed more than 250,000 people and left behind massive destruction. Can we protect ourselves against tsunamis? Yes, of course. To protect ourselves against tsunamis, we build diversion channels, floodgates, dikes and walls. But this isn't always enough. In Japan, in 2011, a tsunami broke through all these barriers and destroyed the Fukushima nuclear power plant, creating a massive nuclear disaster, killing 18,000 people and forcing a large part of the population to leave their homes. The nuclear accident was so severe that the areas polluted by the radioactivity are still uninhabitable to this day. To protect ourselves from tsunamis, scientists and policymakers worldwide have agreed to build a rapid alarm system around the world. One can monitor seismic activity. and water pressure from a distance. To protect oneself, one must be aware of the risks and react quickly. So remember, when nature can't be stopped, the only solution is to flee to the highest possible ground as fast as one can. And now I suggest you watch a 3D movie on the formation of a tsunami. <laughs>